Okay, now we are recording. Okay, so uh, today is going to be a short lesson. Uh, and I keep always saying that, but uh, let's see how it goes. Um, now, I have given you, um, let me just uh, quickly, uh, quickly, there's a little bit of a window here happening because the door is open. It's going to be closed soon, all right? <laughs> we got some office environment going on here. Oh, look at that. Uh, so now, uh, I'm just, uh, just as a reminder, um, here, I'm going to call up the YouTube playlist here, uh, library in my playlists, where are they, there they are. Okay, so here is the our YouTube playlist, and as a reminder, the structure is the top is the lectures and the bottom is the labs. So after the last lecture, you're going to get the first lab. So elect 10, 13, 20, 22, winter. Uh, da, 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 da. Go down, go down, go down. This was uh, yesterday's lecture, and after, underneath that is going to be today. Uh, today's lecture and underneath that you have two lectures uh, this is for you to watch uh, these are the optical fiber and we were next time we see each other we're going to discuss uh, that a little bit uh, just to uh, um, just to see if you understood everything and if not then uh, we'll just go into some further details on that but this is important that you watch that uh, okay, so that's why today's lesson is going to be short because you have a lot of stuff to watch. Right? Now, as a reminder for the labs, uh, I'm asking you to watch the videos as a preparation. You really need to watch those videos because right? uh, there's a lot of information that you will need while you go to work. Right? Uh, one thing is uh, giving you the lectures and doing the labs and going through the testing uh, so uh, you, you know so you listen to the class, you participate in the classes and you do the labs and you write the tests and so on and you get the mark. Uh, mark is one thing. The other thing is actually being able to do the job, to do the job that once you find yourself working for, for some company. All right. So there's a lot of information in those videos that I, those sort of prep videos uh, that uh, you are actually going to need to know uh, while you go to work. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the reason. Not just for me. It's not just my thing that's okay. Watch it, you know, or else or whatever. No, it's, it's for you. All right, so uh, just, just just take it as it is, okay? Uh, all right, so <clears throat> uh, today we're going to have a short lesson on the termination types. Uh, the lecture posted notes are already there. Let me just verify that those things are there. Um, yeah, content and student items lecture notes uh, optical fiber one optical fiber two. Oh no it's not there let me just quickly do that okay um, actually you know what i'll i'll put those notes right after uh right after there's not much going on in there Actually, no, this is the one right here. All right, that's the one. Uh, termination types, copper. All right, so that's the, that's, the, that's the lecture. I knew I put it there. Uh, so yeah, so that's the one. Okay, so let's quickly jump into termination type, copper. Okay. Control L. So for the computer networks, the termination types, we have done uh, so far what we have done. Well, in the safety 1051, you have done the screw terminals. We've done the uh, duplex receptacles termination and, and uh, things that are associated with that. So screw terminals would be one. Uh, the other, uh, the, in, uh, in, in this course, uh, we have done so far, we have done the toolless termination. We have done the 110 type of termination. We have done the uh, IDC B type B connector, uh, kind of a crimp type of a termination. And we have done 
um, pretty much most of us already, there's a uh, there's couple of groups that haven't done it yet, uh, is the BIX termination. All right. So let's just uh, take a look at what termination is and you know, let's just give you some of the synopsis of why is it that, uh, that we're teaching you this. Okay. So uh, termination, definition of termination. What is it? Cable termination is, and this is what I wrote a couple of years ago, uh, the connection of two wire, the connection of the wire, okay. the connection of the wire or a fiber to a device. Right? So termination, okay. such as device, such as equipment, panels, or a wall outlet. And that termination allows for connecting the cable to other cables or devices. So it's basically terminating is connecting things. Right. Simple enough. Right. Now, the uh, uh, little bit of uh, history lesson, it's not much, but uh, uh, IDC, Insulation Displacement Connector. All those, uh, except for the screw terminals that we have done uh, last term, um, uh, this is a, something that's called an insulation uh, displacement. And I'm just going to read that a little bit, so bear with me, okay? In the early days of the connectors, 1940s, okay, wires were generally soldered. Uh, that was the uh, that was the be all and end all connection, and you know what? It still is uh, in some cases, right? In you know, in highly vibrative environment, you are not going to use uh, isolation displacement connector. So you would not use that in a car. You would not use that in a plane. Uh, things will have to be soldered or crimped uh, pretty tightly. Okay? So uh, then came the crimp contacts uh, created uh, created gas tight connections between the wires and contacts by compressing the wire in the u-shaped portion of the contact so crimping was the next thing after soldering All right crimping required stripping uh, crimping required stripping wire and placing it into a crimp machine one by one crimping has proven to be extremely reliable termination method and remains the dominant form of the termination of individual wires even today. So crimping is still going good. Uh, we are going to perform a crimping connection on the coaxial cable um, uh, during our last uh, lab session. Uh, in 1959, a significant change in the industry was born when a pair of inventors patented an insulation displacement termination, IDT or IDC. Insulation and insulation displacement termination or insulation displacement connectors. Right now, uh, for the most part, we are calling it IDC. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, all right. Let's say nineteen fifty nine. Began. Okay. Uh, insulation displacement connector of wires to contacts. So we're connecting the wires to the contacts. Right? Contact points. Stimulating rapid innovation within the connector industry to take the advantage of the cost and labor savings offered by this technology. So, using that uh, termination, the isolation displacement termination, it saves a lot of time. That's uh, you know, time is money, and that's basically what uh, you know what, what motivated uh, the invention of, of 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 this type of termination. Okay? Soldered or crimped is still the best, right? And in some case, cases, you still have to, you have no choice but to use the soldered uh, uh, connection or crimp connection. But sometimes when you can, uh, in case like, uh, you know, the data industry where you have to connect hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, connections, that would take a long time. Uh, you know, those of us who already have done, have gone through the termination of the 25 pair cable, can you imagine how much longer it would take you if you had to strip and solder all those connections? How much longer would it take for you to terminate that 25 pair cable uh, as opposed to what we did, which would be the IDC, which is using the punch down tool. Okay? Uh, in the tracking back, in the tracking back, the origin of the invention. I came up on US pattern. Okay, so it's, I, I get this thing from the internet here. Uh, so there's, there's a number of pattern, uh, patent, and and so on. Um, Minnesota manufacturing known as 3M right now. 
Okay, so um, so basically the idea of isolation displacement connection is uh, to save time, and uh, the technology has gone far enough that the connection in many cases is reliable enough. You would not use that in the car industry because there's a lot of vibrating going on, vibrations, and those could wiggle those connectors out of there. Uh, but if there is a cable that is inside a wall, it's connected to another, from one connector to another, it's also mounted on the wall. The building is not vibrating because it's not a car or a plane or, or locomotive or so or so whatnot. Uh, the, the, those determinations are quite reliable. Okay. Now, here is the idea of the insulation displacement connector. We don't strip the cables. We, use, we leave the insulation right on, on the, on the cable. So you're putting, a, you know, preceding it, putting this thing against the connector and then use some sort of a pushing device, which usually is called a punch down tool, to push that into that connector and the connector bites into the insulation and makes connection with the, uh, with the conductor that is inside. Now, one thing I'm going to point out um, that, uh, you know, and, and I was thinking about removing that and replacing it with some other image. However, um, <clears throat> this gives me uh, this gives me opportunity to mention this type of uh, this type of um, uh, connection that was actually would be wrong. You see, on this image here, the conductor is shown as stranded, stranded wires or stranded conductors are not to be used with IDC simply because when the connector bites into the insulation and makes a contact with the with the conductor those tiny little strands that make up the stranded conductor they could be broken right? so you're not getting the full benefit of the gauge of the wire the uh, the IDC type of connection requires a solid conductor And uh, this is an example of a, well, Ethernet jack being punched with the 110 type of a connection. Right? You put those wires in, use the punch down tool to push those in. The punch down tool pushes those connectors, conductors into the connectors and it cuts off the remaining access wi excess wire. Right? Uh, general overview. Presently, and I, I just left that date on. Presently, in 2020, well, well now it's 2022. Nothing has changed since then. All right. Uh, the two most common punch down platforms used in Canada are 110 and Bix. We already have done both. Well, most of us. All right. There are a couple of groups that. Uh, uh, that are supposed to do the lab on Friday, and if you don't do the lab on Friday, you'll just do it the next time we see each other. Right? Uh, <clears throat> would be the BICS. Uh, however, there is an extensive BICS lesson that uh, that that you can uh, that you can partake of um, in the lab seven preparation. All right, so BICS is quite well explained there, and most of us who have seen the video know what I'm talking about. Right? Uh, if you end up working in the telecommunications industry, you will also see something that's called 66 blocks okay, uh, as part of the existing old installation. And I'll show you what the 66 blocks look like. It's, it's the same idea as the BICS, but it's just it's, it's a different shape and just looks different. Um, <clears throat> and of course, because it's a different shape of a connector, uh, we have to use different type of a punch down tool head. Okay? So the 66 system is still widely used in USA. They, they somehow the uh, the Americans like to use that uh, that type of connection. It's quite popular there. So if you get an installation contract from a company located south of the border, which you know, we're in Canada, so US is south of us, um, you and I find a 60 block, 66 block shipped to you. What I mean by that is that uh, sometimes um, when you get the installation contracts. Uh, you, uh, you you will get those installation contracts from companies that are located in Canada, or sometimes you will get those contracts from companies that are located somewhere in the USA. Usually, when you get the contracts from Canada, uh, well, if there is a, uh, I would say, logistically organized 
undertaking in such a way that uh, the, the company takes care of a chain type of industry. Like, for example, uh, there could be a big company that services all the Home Depots around Canada and US. All right? Or maybe there is some uh, other company that services the Burger Kings or some other fast food places or Tim Hortons's. Uh, or, or some other retail stores, or maybe some manufacturers and plants. Uh, those uh, right now these days, um, uh, the companies do not uh, do not uh, do not hire the installation, uh, do not contract things out by themselves. They contract the service service companies that uh, that um, basically take care of the IT um, part of it. Okay, so. The, uh, uh, some of the examples would be CompuCom, that would be a Canadian company. There will be something that's Bellywick, uh, and Bellywick is located in Minnesota. Uh, others, um, there's some other ones. Um, Cisco is, is a huge company, it goes uh, basically both US and Canada. So uh, these are comp the service, service companies that design the systems and they contract companies that are locally placed to do the installations. So if you're located in southwestern Ontario, you, you know, you work for some company that's located in that, uh, that company, that big company that services um, the whole North America, they would, uh, they would contract that company out. And, uh, and when that happens, uh, they have, they, they will ship you a manual that's this thick, or maybe two of those manuals that are this thick, and you're going to have to read that before your first installation. And uh, if you repeat the installations, you know you don't have to read as much. You're just going to have to use it as a reference, right? So, uh, so if uh, if uh, if you're complaining about uh, sometimes you, you you might find it a little bit too much of those videos that I, I give you to watch. It's about hours, sometimes hour and a half of watching. Okay, but uh, when uh, when you go to work, you get a couple of manuals about this thick. There goes your weekend forget hour and a half <laughs> and you have to read it you don't watch it <laughs> so uh, uh, so what happens is that the company will design the system and it's repeatable uh, to you know it's basically consistent through all the um, installations that are of the same uh, company and they will ship you the equipment and uh, they will, you don't have to buy the equipment they ship it to you right so the company bills that company bills the other company you just hired as an installer uh, so, uh, in, in, in cases of uh, companies that are located in the States, when it comes to telecommunication equipment, you will see a 66 block shipped to you. Right? So, that's what I mean here. Right? Uh, now, uh, the common practice um, that we used to do when I was working in, uh, for different companies, contracting uh, as a contractor, um, when, they, when I saw a 66 block, uh, I would just basically recycle that and use a Bix because this is this is what we use in Canada right also the Bix blocks or the Bix termination platforms uh, when it comes to POTS line terminations and in some cases CAT 5e terminations but not as much um, <clears throat> in Canada it's mostly Bix right or 110 66 it's a little bit in the state still but uh, since the POTS lines are being phased out you're going to see less and less of them however in some of the old installations or the existing installations, you will still see them. And once you bump into one of those, I want you to know what it is that you're looking at and how to uh, go about it. Right? Uh, okay, so uh, there are many punch down platforms. All right, it's like there are many stories, and this one is mine. Okay, so there are many punch down platforms. Uh, the shapes and forms might vary, but the purpose is one, to organize the field wiring in a permanent and systematic way. I'm just going to read that and explain this thing to you. So it can be cross-connected, uh, so, so it can be easy to cross-connect various points of the cabling structure. Physically, a permanent cabling structure makes it possible for the cable runs to be tested and or certified. This way, cross-connecting changes will not affect the physical structure of permanently installed cabling. Okay, so here's a mouthful. Let me explain this to you. Right. Uh, if you have, uh, is this is this right? Yes, it writes. So if you have a building, um, let's say this represents a building, okay, inside building. Yeah. 
And on, on the wall here, we're going to have a bunch of wiring terminals. And over here, you are also are going to have a bunch of wiring terminals. And in between, there could be different rooms, different floors, and so on. Let's say you're going to, uh, you're going to have to extend, whoa, you're going to have to extend a wire in the ceiling and behind the wall and terminate it right here. So let's say there's a, there's, this is, will be the main communication room. This will be the D mark point which is a point of entry. Right? And this would be some kind of a secondary point that has to uh, um, uh, like this would be the main communication room. And this would be in the mall, for example, uh, would be a communication room in one of the department stores. There could be another one going to some other. Right? So uh, let's say this, uh, the communication requires so many lines, so you're going to get some extra just in case you need to add some. So quite often you would get something that's called a 25 pair cable going on from here to here. Or uh, well, what else could you do possibly? Well, you could get a bunch of cables running there and connect those uh, using screw terminals or moret, oh, moret the uh, wire nut connectors and all so on. And before long, this thing becomes a huge mess. And over here, it becomes a huge mess. And if you write things down, what you, can, what you have connected to which, and maybe you can number those cables with the permanent marker or maybe wrap around labels, still, it will be a huge mess here, and it will be a huge mess here. So the platform that we have used, for example, the 25 pair platform, allows us to terminate those wires in a standardized way that you don't need any notes, you don't need any manual, you don't need anything because you know that if you connect those 25 pairs in a standardized way that we just connected here, and if you connected those here in a standardized way, you know that pair one on this terminal is pair one on that terminal. And pair 17 on this terminal is also pair 17 on that terminal because we have done it according to the, to the color code. Uh, also, when, uh, when we do uh, patch panels that involve multiple category cables like CAT5E or CAT6 or whatnot, also that uh, those wires are permanently terminated here. They are run in the wall and mounted in the ceiling in a permanent way. Nobody's supposed to, touch. well, they're not to be touched, not to be used. You know. And then uh, here, it's also permanently install, installed. Now, um, when they are permanently installed on this point, throughout and to this point, then you can consider this thing as a permanent cable infrastructure which means you can plug in a tester on one end and plug in the other part of the tester on the other end, and you can perform the tests that would confirm the wire mapping and they would confirm that the, the way the cable is installed, it actually fulfills the specifications of a specific link that is supposed to be like CAT5E, or it fulfills the specifications of CAT6, or CAT6A, or CAT7, or so, or what not. And once those things are tested, since they are not supposed to be moved, not to be moved, then they can be actually presented as, yes, you have a guarantee that this cable from here to here um, is, uh, is able to provide certain, uh, uh, certain type of a signal and withstand certain, uh, carry certain type of a signal with certain types of uh, specifications. Right? Now, when you use the patch cords to connect it to other pieces of equipment here, then you just plug it in here and plug it in here and plug it in here and plug it. You can unplug things and you can cross connect things whichever way you want, but you're not affecting the permanent installation. So that's basically what that slide means. All right. This way right here. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at Bix. Bix is the one that we have done. This is our most recent lab that we have performed. That's what the Bix head looks like. It does have something that's called a moving knife, not a stationary knife. Once you punch it, that knife moves. It's going to move and it's going to cut off the remaining uh, part of the conductor. Okay. And this part right here, right here, is going to push the conductor into the IDC connector. So that's what the BIX looks like. 
and this is what the Bix uh, connector looked like. Here's a pair, here's a connector, here's a connector, here's a connector, here's a connector, and the whole thing is also called a connector. There's a terminal, okay, there's a terminal, there's a terminal, and this whole thing is, a called, is called connector. You punch in the wire right here, and there is a physical piece of metal that goes on the other side, and once you punch this cable right here, this connect conductor right here, you can punch another wire in there and run it to another point of another connector like this. So let's say this thing goes from one piece of equipment and then there's another uh, conductor that is uh, somewhere else and you can use something that's called a cross connect wire to connect this pair over here to another pair that is connected to another connector. So that's the whole idea. That's what the Bix looks like. And the Bix, again, Lab 7, uh, Lab 7 um, preparation video, it talks all about Bix. Then there is also something that's called 110. See, the head is a little bit different. As opposed to moving knife, the head for 110, punch down, the knife is right here, but it's not a moving knife, it's a stationary knife. It's permanently basically molded into there, right? And then you use that on most of the data connectors uh, that are punched down connectors, uh, they use 110 system. The 110, the number is treated, treat that number as a name, okay? It's a 110 system. Right? It doesn't mean it has 110 of something and the other platform would have like maybe only uh, 42 of something. No, it's a 110 system treated as a name. So that's what 110 looks like. So these are the most popular ones that are used in Canada and the United States. Now, in the United States, you also use something that's called 66 blocks. Now, 66 blocks, they look like that. And we also have, we actually have one mounted right in our classroom, right beside the telephone system that, uh, that, that sometimes I'm uh, showing you. Uh, if you want, you can come up to it and you can play with it. You can't break it. And if you break it, that's okay. Uh, you know, it's a school, but very unlikely that you're going to break it. So this is what the 66 punch down tool looks like. Uh, on one side, there, there's one with a knife and the other side, there's one with no knife. All right, so you basically put those wires into those terminals. These are IDC connectors. So here's a row of 66 IDC connector. So you would put one pair. So here's a blue pair. It goes to the first row and to the bottom row. And you punch that here, and you can grab that from the other side to continue to something else. So that's how you cross connect it. Now, some of the 66 blocks, because you will see some of those in some of the old installations, existing installations in Canada, or if you travel to the States uh, and work there, you might see some of that a lot, right? So some of those 66 rows, they are permanently connected. So you just punch one here and you punch the other one and you get a connection. So you punch one here and you punch another one and you, those, this wire will be connected to that wire. Then you punch another one, so this would be white blue, for example, the top row, and the solid blue would be on the next bottom row here. And that's how you would grab the pair. So some of them are connected straight through internally inside that block, and some of them would have these two connected to each other, and there would be a break here, and these two will be connected to each other. And so you could just punch in the cables from one side, and punch in the connectors from the other side, and those ones that you want the connection through, you would have something uh, like a clip. You would just clip it onto here so to make this connection, and clip it onto here to make this connection. So whichever way you're going to see that, uh, it's not just enough to punch them down, but you have to make sure that there's continuity. Um, you know, you, you're going to get the one that's connected, or the one that requires clips uh, to, uh, to be connected. Hmm? There is a hand. Let's see who rose a hand. Somebody rose a hand. Why don't you pipe in on the, if you, you can, uh, okay, where did you get the punch tool? Where did you get the punch tool? Is that Stephen? Uh, that, that was your hand? Uh, 
Um, well, the punch down, if that's your hand, I, okay, cool, all right. So the punch down tools, um, some of them you can get in the department stores such as Home Depot, Lowe's, or Rona, or whatnot. Uh, some of them you can get at the electrical distributors, um, such as the one that we have across the street, well, not across, the, just around the corner from us. Uh, it's called Electrozaw, there's a Netco, there's some other distributors. So they will have those. Um, Sometimes they would have the 110 and they would have the Bix pretty much almost in stock. If you want to order 66, they might have to order it for, for you. Or you can just order them on Amazon. Uh, I said, uh, um, yeah, well, you might buy one of those um, if you want to practice that. Uh, if you want to buy, um, I will send you some email links to that if you really want to buy those, all right? And usually they're like hundred dollars each. Uh, you sometimes you're going to see something, some special like you know twenty six dollars special on one of the department stores. I would mostly stay away from that. Right? Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, so that's what sixty six blocks look like. So we have covered the bigs. We have covered 110, we have covered BIGS. There's also one thing that you might not, you might see that um, used mostly, it's mostly used in UK, right? It's used in Europe, European Union, and uh, in England, right? It's the cron connection, cron platform. Same as BIGS, same as 110, well, same but different. It's just the shape is different. The the, the way the connector is shaped is different, so then you have to use the specific tool that is designed for this specific system. Here's the thing. If you have a 110 uh, connections, connectors, you have to use 110 punch down tool. If you have Bix connectors, you have to use Bix punch down tool. If you have 66, you have to use 66 punch down tool sometimes but they didn't tell you that so don't tell anybody sometimes you can use needle nose pliers with 66 blocks but uh, i didn't tell you that all right so don't tell anyone it's a secret okay uh so <clears throat> uh then if you use cron you have to use the cron big span of cron punch down tool <laughs> and the cron punch down tool that's what the head looks like right here right. and that's how we are punching them and sometimes the crown punch down tools they will have little paraphernalia i used to word paraphernalia a lot lately so i don't have to slap myself on that uh there are those little, little hooks and whiskers uh to whisk things out uh in order to um remove those wires maybe right? uh, the one thing about the cron is uh, all those punch down platforms as the big 66 110 each connector is supposed to handle one con conductor. Right? So one wire goes to one connector, and that's it. If you start stacking them up, the one on the bottom might get compromised connection already. Right? When it comes to cron, cron is not the only one that I know of, is that you can stack them up. So on top of one pair, you can stack another pair if you just want to connect one to the other. So that's what the cron is. Okay? All right, so uh, here is an example of a Bix uh, termination field. You see, we just terminated one 25 cable, 25 per cable during our labs, but here is a stack of those. Uh, you know, the frame that we used is able to handle 10 connectors, so here, uh, here are 10 connectors. This one is filled up, all right? and so is this one. It's filled up, and so this would be the uh, the wiring, the telephone wiring, the POTS wires that come from outside and they are terminated here and they are terminated here. Well, they have to go somewhere. So you get the field wiring uh, that, go, that goes to individual, let's say, telephone uh, jacks in the walls or whatnot and they can, they can go all over the place and some of them you can get another 25 pair cables that goes to a communication room on some department stores and you terminate them on to another BIX field. So you have these wires coming from outside, they're terminated on these 
uh, Bix connectors. And then you have the field wiring, and the field wiring is basically the wire in the building, uh, the wires in the building. And they're terminated on the other, on some other termination blocks. And these are not connected to that because this is a standalone terminated field, and this is a standalone terminated field. You use a cross connect wire. You take a wire that basically one pair and you terminate it because remember we, we once we terminate it we flip them so we terminate it from the front then we flip them so the terminated cable is at the back so you can grab those pairs from the front so you use a cross connect wire to punch in punch in here's a pair and you run it to another termination block and punch in punch in that's how you cross connect right? okay so that's the uh, example of bix uh, termination field right? this is an example of 110. 110 mostly is used by data. This is a back of a uh, communications rack, and this would be patch panels. We will we will terminate some simple version of a patch panel uh, during our next lab, and we're going to use 110 punch down tool. But this is a this is a bigger version of that. Um, uh, so there's a huge patch panel field of the field wiring that each of those wires probably goes to some sort of an outlet or, or data outlet or data jack that's in a wall or a desktop or whatnot. Uh, so that's what 110 looks like for the most part. And this is a picture that I took from one of the service calls I had. Um, it was an um, old, old, huge facility like a mall. And I'm not going to tell you where that is, uh, but it's not anywhere close to here. Uh, so uh, this, when it was installed sometime in the 60s or 70s, uh, it was using the 66 blocks. So that's what the 66 termination field looks like. Right? The service calls that I had with that one was that uh, there was one store that was being renovated in the big mall. And the, all the communication lines, the telephone lines, had to be patched through to another location that that store would use temporarily while the renovations are being done over there. Okay? So uh, what I had to do is I had to connect something that's called a toning device to, uh, to their, because um, nothing was labeled here. There was no label. It looks like somebody was working there for years and years and years, and they took really good care of that. And maybe that person has retired, and that's it. So uh, you know, so there will be other uh, companies that will be contract contracted. They would come, and, and I, I was one of them that I had to perform the switch from one location to another. So I had to. Uh, it looks this thing here looks like it's very intimidating, bunch of wires kind of a field. But if you know what you're doing. Uh, which is basically a one step closer, you know, it's time I talk to you, to knowing what, you know, because we have terminated 25 pair on the BICs. Now, it's the same thing, but it's the 66 blocks, right? So, um, uh, I would just have to plug in the toner to the phone line that is in the existing um, location. And I would have to walk probably for 10 minutes to get into this main communication room. And I would use the probe to listen for the toning signal. And I would, it was able to, to um, approximately find out where that tone is sounding from. So I would just close onto the area, and then I would just go through single pairs and where the signal is the strongest. And once I thought it was that one, I would short that pair, and that tone should disappear. So that's that pair. All right. So then I would just mark that. And then I would go 10 minutes, walk to the other location there, and I would put the, put the toner into the new location. And again, I would look for the toners, for the tone on the other side, all right? Same way, okay? And I was able to find that. And then, so I go, so, all right, so from here, I got to connect that wire, disconnect that from the main feed, and connect it to the other one, right? And I made some, actually... I made some uh, marks for my, I marked the territory for myself because um, I knew that a couple months later I would have to come back and undo the process. So that's why you can see a couple of yellow electrical tape <laughs> marks here with my notes on it, right? Uh, and the other one was uh, on the other side of this field, right? So that's what 66 uh, termination field looks like, right? Um, if you don't, uh, if if you're not in the in, in the business, it will look intimidating to you. Right? But uh, but now, if, 
the, the, the more you exposure you get to that, the more natural this kind of stuff becomes to you. And this is, is that the last slide? Yes, this is the last slide. I just showed you the uh, different type of termination. 66, 110, Bix, and Cron. Right? Again, Bix, 110, 66, and Cron. Out of which, in Canada, most of you are going to see Bix and 110. And in the States, most of you are going to see 110 and 66. Right? The purpose is one, is to accomplish an isolation displacement connection. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for it, uh, that's it for today. Um, as far as the the hottest topics that is being talked about lately, I don't know how things are going to um, uh, to turn out, and nobody knows. And I don't want to say something that I could be held responsible for saying. So um, just uh, watch the news and, uh, and and see how things are going to turn out. Hopefully, I'm going to see you soon. Uh, if not, I'm going to see you when I see you. you know, uh, based on the uh, you know how things evolve. All right? Now, <coughs> um, that's that's pretty much it for today. And that was my kind of a speech of about what was going on. Actually, as far as I can say things. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm turning 22 this Friday. Hey, so happy birthday, 22. Do I remember when I was 22? I don't think I do remember that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, do we have uh, who was it that was going to see me after? Stay after. Thomas, right? Yeah. So, um, what are we going to do? I'm going to terminate that, Thomas. I'm going to send you email with a brand new link. Uh, and I'm going to wait for you there. Okay, Thomas, can you hear me? Okay, cool. All right, so thank you very much, guys, and I will talk to you when I talk to you, and I will see you when I see you.